so that's what I said. You can't put mustard on that. It's to do what? Rock climbing. I do get asked about that too. Um, no, I don't do rock climbing or any kind of climbing. Um, I guess they have indoor rock climbing, which is supposed to be safer because of the plastic uh, colored handles. You know, um, I still wouldn't do it because uh, I'm I, I, I like I'm more of like a I like sitting better. I'm I'm better at sitting. Steve Weiner here from GetRubix.com, and as I said last time, if you didn't like part one, you ain't going to like part two. Today, we're going to keep talking about the journey to uh, a cloud-native device and how you can support it and how you can uh, uh, transition from the way we're managing things now to modern endpoint. So that's a note of rock climbing. Bowling, uh, possibly. Nah, I, I don't like to move. Okay, welcome to the Cloud Native Endpoint something part two. I don't know what we're calling it, but if you recall part one, which uh, looks like a lot of fun here, we talked about the Cloud Native device, why you should be moving to Cloud Native, and um, some of the things that make it, uh, you know, more efficient. We talked a little bit about how it works. We talked about autopilot. We talked about common misconceptions. So this was a fun whiteboard. Okay, so moving on to uh, part two, we're gonna talk about some activities you're gonna wanna conquer in order to get there. Okay, the first thing we're gonna talk about is group policy, um, kind of some best practices, what our approach is to it, and uh, moving that. And then in this you know, following video, we're definitely gonna go into the, the technical aspect of it. All right, next up is gonna be access. Um, so this is one that I think is somewhat confusing for folks when they say, okay, well, if my device is joined to the cloud, and not the traditional domain, how do I access things on-prem? And, and we're going to talk about that. Okay, and the last thing I want to kind of address in, in terms of like categories of activities is security, right? Because nine times out of 10, when I talk to folks and say, you shouldn't be joining to the domain anymore, they say, well, how am I going to keep this secure? Right, they think the domain equals the security. That's just not the case anymore in a modern zero trust environment. So let's get into these. Okay. Okay, so with group policy, your objects are applied from the domain. So the, when the device is domain joined and on the domain, it can receive these policies. There we go. Um, but here's actually a good uh, thing to bring up is what happens when the machine is not on the domain, right? Where, where does that go? So when the PC is cloud joined, so we're gonna say, Intune and Entra, because it's kind of the same entity. When they're Entra joined, um, Intune does the policy, right? So, okay, so it's not going to matter where the machine is, it's going to receive those policies. So that's how it works when we're cloud joined. It's actually a much better system, because if I want to change a policy here, but my machine is not on the domain, how, how do I get there, right? It's like, how is it going to reach there? Is this VPN? Maybe. Do people connect to their VPN all the time? Do you have to have an always on VPN? That seems like it's not really convenient to if you want to change a policy. So we move the policy to Intune. Okay, so we put the policies up here in Intune. But how does that work? Okay, so Okay, with Intune, group policies are now what's called CSP or configuration profiles, right? This is based on the OMA URI protocol that we all know from mobile device management, right? MDM with phones. Remember what we said yesterday? Start thinking about these like we think about the phones. So what do we have to do to make this happen? Well, the first thing we have to understand is how CSPs work. All right, I'm going to put a link below because I think it's very important everyone understand how policy CSP works. Um, Microsoft has always had this page. Um, it kind of talks about the way they break it down, what policies are available, how they're constructed, and how it works to push these from Intune. I mean, just to show you a little bit, I'm going to scroll down. I mean, there's literally, I mean, there's so many policies here, right, in terms of... Uh, what's available and then when you scroll up here you're looking at admx back policy admx back policies are literal um they are literal um 
you know, rips of the group policy settings that exist in the traditional uh, PC. So it's really important to understand how these, uh, you know, how these relate to each other. So for example, if we wanted to take a group policy setting, like enable the app V client. Okay. Uh, this allows you to enable or disable Microsoft app virtualization. Doesn't matter. This is a traditional, uh, group policy that you would generally create in your GPO editor. And clearly if we manage devices on the domain today, we know how this works, but what does that mean for a CSP? How could that possibly work? Okay. So for CSPs, the CSP is set in Intune literally the same way, right? So there's, you go into Intune and you search for your setting and you can literally flip the switch. They do the same thing, right? So when we talk about first thing is like feature parity, well, it's pretty much there now. I'll say pretty much because maybe it's not at the 100% mark, but I would say for any, um, you know, for, for all intents and purposes, virtually all Windows endpoint policies are available through Intune, through CSP or ADM XBAC CSP. So you're fine there. But the question is, how do you do this, right? So how do you make this shift? Because what you really need to do is, you, you know, how many of these policies do you use, right? Both for the device and the user, right? So what's the number of policies? What are they? And how do you match them all up? You essentially have to analyze your group policies. Well, would you look at that? Luckily, there is a tool in Intune called, and this, the name might shock you, Group Policy Analytics. This allows you to export your group policy files, upload them all to Intune, and then literally it'll tell you what percentage of that policy, what percentage of the settings within the policy is supported. So if we look here inside one of our policies, you can see literally each setting right? Is there MDM support? Meaning, is it in Intune? Yes. There is the, um, there is the CSP mapping. So how does it map against the CSP policies? It will tell you if there is no MDM support, but then we also have to look at what that is because sometimes there are modern ways to deal with this. Cause again, this device will not be joint joined to the domain. So it may not need settings that revolve around that. What's the process for this, right? So we talk about how do you go about this tool? So that's an old screenshot. It's missing something kind of critical. The tool now supports this migrate button. This means that if you wanted to, you can literally upload your policies, click migrate, and it'll migrate all the applicable policies over to Intune. But should we do that? All right, so here's the thing. Yes, there is a technical capability that allows us to uh, upload all our group policies into Intune and click a button to migrate them all in. But does that mean we should do it? Well, before we can answer that question and talk about the right way to approach this, we have to talk about some, some we have to answer some questions. First up is how old are the policies? Which then kind of leads to the question, how often are those policies evaluated? The reason this is important is because you might have things in your group policy that date back to Windows 7 or XP. There is no reason to move those over to Intune. So it's a good idea that we kind of take this opportunity to start fresh. Why are we setting certain policies? Okay, so yes, we have policies. And I guarantee you, if you were to read through your organization's group policies, you may be asking yourself the question, uh, what does this do? Why do we have this? Because remember, our goal is not to set policy, right? That, that's not the goal here is to have group policy. Our goal is to manage the endpoint, right? Manage the PC. That means we might have a group policy setting for something. So we have a group policy object that does a thing. And up in Intune, there might be a different name of something that does the same thing. Because remember, the goal is to the goal is to do the thing. We want to do the same thing if it's a security um, concern. Okay, so in the activity of GPO transition to a cloud native PC, here are the first activities. Okay, the first activity would be to set security baselines. 
right? All of the CIS benchmarks and things you're trying to set group policy for, you can very easily do in Intune by automatically setting kind of a greatest hits that they offer of all the most common policies and their recommended values, right? You don't even have to go searching for the individual settings. I would start there and see how far that gets you, right? That will most likely take you, let's say, let's say it took you 80% of the way there. Okay, your next stop is gonna be individual settings, right? Going through the Intune settings catalog, looking for things that are missing, right? That you do wanna bring over. Okay, we're in the home stretch now. We're almost at a full 100%. So maybe for the 7%, um, you're gonna import ADMX, third party stuff like, you know, whether it's a uh, Zoom policy or Firefox, Google Chrome is built in now, but anything that's not, you know, native, um, that you could still import and do that and set individually for yourself. Okay, I actually don't know how accurate these numbers are, but you kind of get the gist of what I'm saying. Uh, small, big, bigger, and the biggest. You, you get the point. The last thing we should be doing as part of the move over is clicking that migrate button for certain settings. So once you've done your security baselines, right, and you have most things covered, you're reaching that CIS benchmark, then you fine tune with individual settings in Intune policy. You bring in third party stuff by the ADMX and address it that way. And anything left that you absolutely need that the first three didn't catch, um, you can then go ahead and use the analytics migrate to get to your cloud native PC. I think it's really important that um, to know a lot of folks aren't necessarily familiar with all the capabilities in Intune in terms of policies, ADMX, the settings catalog, being able to migrate stuff. Um, and it also could be overwhelming. You're easily gonna find multiple places to do these things and say, well, which one do I do? Do I migrate over? Do I use a settings cat catalog? Do I use the baseline? So I think it's good to have kind of a methodology and an approach to this so that we're maintaining the security posture of the PC, but we're also not bringing over years of garbage. Um, I've been at this for a long time, have yet to meet any organization that says, no, our group policies are nice and tidy. We review them every six months, we clean them up, so we know we can migrate over and not have a problem. It's usually just a pile of spaghetti written by a guy who's frankly probably no longer at the organization anymore and left you to deal with it. So, um, you know, that's how we're going to do it. Uh, in terms of the cloud native PC, this is usually the biggest hurdle when folks address something that's keeping them on prem domain join. So hopefully this sheds some light on, you know, the approach to take. And eventually when we go past approach, we are going to take a look at the technical how to do this. But I think this is good conversation to start having with your org. And I did warn everyone, it's only going to get worse from here. So if you like the domain and if you you know you're not a fan of the cloud i would recommend uh, another youtube channel because there are definitely many of those we'll be seeing you five four three